YouTube of yous. Hey guys, what's up? I'm Kat. Welcome back to my channel. If you've been here before, welcome if you're new. I appreciate you all being here so much and I'm super stoked to make a video today. So we are in my daughter's room. As you can tell, it's probably not quite my scene, although there are some goats. Can we talk about these real quick? Look at this print. Oh my god, how cute is this? I ordered myself one. I'll have to insert a picture of what it looks like. I got a print from flukeladyart.com of this adorable little ghost in a UFO and I got one of the limited ones that glows in the dark. And when I got it, they sent me this whole extra print in the mail of these ghosts and flowers. I just thought this was so sweet and so cute and it definitely goes with my daughter's aesthetic, so. We um, framed it and stuck it up here for her in her room, but. Oh, so cute. The baby is actually asleep in my room and my oldest son and his dad are playing video games together in the living room. So I'm in my daughter's bed. She's hanging out down there with her dad and her brother. So we're gonna stay up here and make a video today. So I have been doing makeup for like five years now, almost four or five years. Um, it's been pretty much completely self-taught. I based it all from watching YouTube videos and just practicing a lot. A lot of my friends just in my personal life have seen my growth as I, I went from in high school wearing pretty much no makeup other than a lot around my eyes. <laughs> you know, good old 2000s emo kids. Uh, so now, you know, I can do a full face and I really love doing creative makeup and I dabble a tiny bit in special effects, not really anything good, but I have fun, I just love it. And so my friends that have seen me learn how to do this have just asked me for videos of tips and tricks. And so I thought it would be cool to make videos of really just the basics. Um, I wanna break it up and make a couple videos of different aspects of the makeup routine because I feel like that really helped me when I was learning. It was kind of overwhelming to go from not really knowing how to do anything to watching these videos of beauty gurus on YouTube who do this full face with 500 products. It seemed like a lot to just look up one of those tutorials and follow it from start to finish not knowing what I was doing. So I found it really helpful to look up like, okay, what are tips and tricks for foundation and concealer specifically for like dry to combination skin because that's what I personally have. Um, how do you contour? How do you highlight? How do you do your brows? How, you know, all the different things about eyeshadow shapes and blending and techniques and all those things I think are too much to put into a video of just like, this is how you do your makeup 101. I'm sorry, by the way, that my fingers are dirty. They're stained from when I did my nails yesterday. Let's ignore that. But anyways, I just think it's a lot easier to focus on each step one at a time. So. Today, this is gonna be the first video I make in that series, I guess, kind of, and I figured I would start with um, face makeup. At first, I was thinking I was gonna do just a video just about contouring um, and highlighting or maybe just about foundation, but honestly, I don't do enough for that that I think it would warrant its own video. So I just wanna do like a base you know, your your face makeup today. So we're gonna do foundation, concealer, powder, setting spray, um, bronzer, slash contour, blush. Yeah, and that's that. So, and then in the next videos, we'll do eyebrows and the eyes and all that stuff. But today we're gonna start with the face. So something that took me a really long time to grasp how much of a difference it makes and how important it is because Honestly, I'm lazy and I don't do enough self-care typically. So um, I didn't get how important it was, but that's skincare. You you have to do some. I'll be honest, I still don't really have the best skincare. I don't use that many products, but I definitely try to do something and be a lot more aware than I used to be. So the first thing I use is I have this little sponge that has um, well, it's a, a bar of soap that has a sponge built into it and it's a charcoal soap. It's so it's really good. It gets soft when it gets wet, but it's kind of scratchy and it's so it's a little abrasive. So it's really good for exfoliating. And of course, then it has the soap built right into it. So I don't have to have a separate like scrubber for my face and soap. And so for a lazy person 
one product, one step that makes it a lot easier for me. And what I do is just when I shower, I just take that bar of soap. I get it wet and kind of scrub it just a little bit to lather up the soapy side a little bit. And then I just scrub my face with it. After I do that, I rinse it off. And I also have an exfoliating blackhead clearing scrub. So after I use my um, exfoliating sponge, I go ahead and use this scrub and I rinse the other stuff off and I put a little bit of that in my fingers. I always put it on my T-zone mostly. The main part for me is my nose and around, just around my nose, I guess, because that's where I get the most oily. And then I also get my chin because that's where I tend to get a lot of, um, I don't really get a whole lot of pimples, but I, my pores look clogged and dirty a lot. They don't necessarily look like blackheads, but they just, I don't know. I need to clean my chin. <laughs> so I put some there and I put it on my forehead. My forehead I do because my forehead tends to get really dry. That's the only spot of my face that usually gets really dry is right here. So I do that just for the purpose of exfoliating and getting all that dead skin off. The thing of it is if you don't exfoliate often enough, you're not getting all that dead skin off. And if you don't wash your face often enough, you're not getting all the dirt and oil and stuff off of your face. And when you touch your face, you don't necessarily feel like you're as dirty as it is if you don't do anything about it. And I'm, it's not like it's disgusting or anything, but for the purposes of makeup, it's just not going to look as nice if you don't have a nice, clean, smooth base to apply it over. So ever since I started just literally washing my face, <laughs> as pathetic as that sounds, I've only been doing that for like a year or two, but ever since I started just washing my face on a daily basis and exfoliating, it has made such a big difference in like my foundation never looks cakey anymore. It, It's insane that I just went a couple years without exfoliating and that was i did not understand why i could not make my foundation look as nice and smooth as everybody that i was seeing online i was like i'm using the same products i'm following the same steps i don't understand wash your face bitch that's why that's why it's not working wash your face it's also really important to make sure you wash your makeup off at the end of the day do not sleep in your makeup. First of all, you're gonna get pink eye. That happened to me when I was 18. And I don't know that it was because I didn't wash my makeup off, but I didn't think twice and I would go to sleep with like whatever I had on my face. So even if it was eyeliner and mascara, I would go to sleep. So I'm pretty sure that's probably part of it. But it's just not good for your skin. All that crap is gonna get clogged into your pores. It's gonna make you break out more. It's just not good for you. So wash your face. Okay, we're just gonna dive in. So I don't use a primer. Um, I have tried them before. I've tried some that a lot of people said were really good primers that had really good reviews. I didn't necessarily think that they did anything bad to how my makeup looked, but I don't. I just don't think I made a difference to warrant how expensive they are. Um, and I've, I've done it without primer this whole time and I like the way that it looks. So if primer is what you need, I know that a lot of people think that not using it is like a sin and blasphemy. So it, by all means, you do you. But I personally don't use primer. I do always do my eyebrows and my eye makeup first before I do my base though. That is one thing I will say. Um, a lot of people like to just take powder here and try to dust it away. First of all, that's never worked for me. Anytime that I've ever done that, doesn't matter how much powder I leave there, if I try to dust it away, whatever fallout I have still sticks and smears all over my face. So I don't know what I'm doing wrong, but that just doesn't work for me. Second of all, if I use a lot of powder under my eyes, and especially if I leave it there the entire time I'm doing my eyeshadow look, it looks so dry and cakey and disgusting. So I just don't like to do that. I do my eyebrows first, that way it frames everything nicely it makes it easier for me to do my eyeshadow i don't have to go back and try to clean up under my brow with eyeshadow already here that's just easiest for me i do my brows i do my eyeshadow and then i just take a baby wipe or a makeup wipe and i just clean up whatever fallout i have i wipe my face off and then i go in and do my face routine so i am going to do my eyebrows and my eyeshadow off camera and then i will be back and we will start with the face. All right, we are back. Brows and eyes are done, except for my under eyes. I do always do that part after I do my face. So 
what I did is just a really simple, like my everyday basic gray smoky eye and a little wing and some lashes, simple brow. And then I did go ahead and just literally wipe up under here because I had all kinds of fallout underneath. So now we're just gonna jump in and move on to the face stuff. I personally don't like to use super heavy full coverage foundations. Um, I think they just look really thick on my skin. And I really like the look of my freckles. The only reason I even use foundation is one for a base for my other stuff to blend out on. I think it kind of works a little bit better than putting it on your bare skin. Um, but also just to even out my redness. I don't have it very bad and honestly this lighting is really flattering so I don't know that you can even really tell on camera what it is. But normally like I get really red right around my nostrils um, and my chin gets red and then like my forehead. And then of course, you know, everybody's under eyes are a little bit discolored or funky but like i said i don't like to use anything super full coverage i like to be able to see some of my freckles through i like it to still look like my skin i don't want it to look like i'm not wearing makeup it's pretty obvious that i'm wearing makeup <laughs> but um i like something kind of in the middle so what i have been doing recently is i have actually been mixing the covergirl clean foundation and the CoverGirl, they are the CG Smoothers. It's a BB cream. I'm the color 105 Ivory in this, and I've been using 805 Fair to Light in this. I don't necessarily love the way that either of them look on their own, I'll be completely honest. When I use just the foundation, it looks too makeup-y for me, but the BB cream doesn't give me enough coverage at all. It's not buildable enough for me to cover up the redness, especially around my nostrils. So I like to use just a little bit of both. And I think that this gives me just a tiny bit of coverage and this kind of like what waters it down, so to speak, just kind of makes it look a little bit more uh, skin like. I am almost out of this foundation. I need to get some more, but I like to just dump it on my finger and I do a dab on each cheek, on my chin, and on my forehead. And that's it for the foundation. And like I said, this is really like watery, thin, not full coverage foundation. So it does um, like if I was trying to cover my whole face, I would use a little bit more than this. And then I'm going to take some of this BB cream and I just kind of fill in the spaces like between with little dollops. And that's that. I like to use a sponge to blend out my uh, face makeup. I don't personally like to use a brush very much. I think it leaves it pretty streaky. So I have my damp sponge, which my daughter got lipstick on apparently that I need to clean, but I don't have time for that right now. So here we go. <laughs> For concealer, recently I have been using Too Faced Born This Way concealer. This is just what I have left over, honestly, from Halloween last year. I needed something really full coverage that was good. My boyfriend shaves his head and I covered his entire head in makeup and made him look like a skeleton. I did skull makeup and it was super, super cool. He had a, a contest at work, a makeup, a, a costume contest, and he won, so yay. But this is the palest foundation I could find at the time at the store. They didn't have any white in stock, so I just used this and put other stuff on top of it. This is honestly way more full coverage than what I would typically use. Like, it's amazing concealer. Rude. I live on a four lane highway, if you couldn't tell. Anyway, it is really amazing concealer. It's awesome, awesome coverage. But for me, like I said, I don't typically wear stuff that's that heavy. So I know that we all learned how to do concealer with like the big triangles under our eyes. And I did it that way, like until recently, until I started to use this stuff. This stuff is so <laughs> full coverage. You do not need that much. So I just do a tiny little dot here and here, a tiny dot here, a tiny dot here, a tiny dot here. And even that sometimes I'm like, that was a little bit too much so you honestly unless you are like a full coverage ass bitch great but if you're not just be careful with this stuff but it goes a really long way and it's really nice so um i really like 
Shape Tapes concealer. My favorite concealer I have ever used though is the ColourPop. Um, oh my gosh, which one is it? I wanna say it's the matte one. I'll pop up a picture of which one it is. I love that formula so much. Um, the KVD Beauty one is good, but I honestly, I like the ColourPop one better. And like I said, this is great if you like really full coverage. I'm gonna do a little dot here. I do it towards the inner corner because that's where like the darkest of my dark spots are. <laughs> do a little on my nose, a little on my chin. And that might've been too much for my forehead. <laughs> Sometimes if I have extra on my sponge, I do take a little bit of it. And honestly, especially with a lighter coverage um, foundation, even more so, I like to take just a little bit of the leftovers and put it in the crease around my nostril. Not in the crease, but this part of the skin right here because this is where I have the redness. So I don't like to put a whole apply the concealer to that spot because I don't necessarily want this spot of my face to be highlighted like with concealer but I do want that little tiny bit of extra coverage that I don't necessarily want all over my full face but just in those spots of redness so that's why it's nice if you do have a fuller coverage concealer even with a lighter coverage uh, base that way you're still able to spot conceal really well if you have blemishes or anything like that but it still feels skin like you know so again around my eyebrows i use the flat side of my sponge and just kind of am careful <laughs> and then i usually use my fingertip to kind of like dab and blend the front of my brows in if I need to, I can run a spoolie back through there, but they look pretty good. That's pretty much that. I'm happy with that application. I don't see a whole lot of redness. It's not drastically different, but it just makes me like, I'm not self-conscious about those red spots anymore. I feel like it just evens out my complexion. I don't necessarily wanna look like I'm beat to the gods all the time, but I do like to feel just, what is the word I'm looking for? Um, radiant <laughs> if that makes sense okay so the next step in our routine is powder the one i've been using recently is makeup forever um i don't love this powder i don't necessarily absolutely despise it it works fine um on my face it looks okay but it does absolutely have flashback if you take a picture with flash photography wherever this is on your face especially if you use a lot of it to set your under eyes you look like casper so be aware of that but I mean, other than that, it looks fine on the skin. I have yet to find a powder that I really love. I'm pretty neutral on them. A lot of them have this and I've never really bought or tried one of the bougie expensive ones. So I don't know if you guys have any recommendations for a good translucent powder that, you know, doesn't make your face look cakey and doesn't have flashback. Let your girl know. Uh, bonus points if it's not expensive, because I'll be honest, I will just deal with flashback. I'm not gonna buy an expensive face powder most likely. So, yeah. Anyways, I'm gonna use this. I'm just gonna pour a little bit of this in the cap. And then I have this big fluffy brush. This is from Moda Brushes. Um, I got it at Walmart, and to be honest, these are my favorite brushes I've ever tried. This brand, I love Moda. Oh, actually, also just a tip before I set, especially because right now I've been sitting here talking to you guys. I usually, when I'm not recording and talking, I will conceal one eye and powder it and then conceal the other eye and powder it. Just that way it eliminates creases. Also, I'm very expressive when I talk. I raise my eyebrows a lot, so I have wrinkles on my forehead a little bit. That's a spot that I typically like to try to set as soon as I put my foundation on and then my smile lines especially. I get really creasy because I smile a lot. So <laughs> those spots where you crease, typically it's best to set those like ASAP. Like as soon as you're done putting on whatever cream makeup you are gonna put in that area, set that area. For me personally, I like to even do it before I move on to the rest of my face because a lot of times by the time I've done that, it's creased. But just a tip, if you do forget, you know, to set it right away or whatever, if you ever are experiencing creasing, before you have set with powder. Once you've set with powder, you're pretty much, you've set that crease into place. But before you have set with powder, you can go, I can show you a little bit here. 
I don't have a lot of makeup on, so it might not make a huge difference anyway. But you can go to where it's caked into the crease and just literally like use your fingers and tap it out. And then set it with your powder. And like I said, I do just, I have a wrinkle there. You're going to see that no matter what. But now at least there's not little balls of makeup that have like caked and crusted and dried in that crease. It just looks like my skin. So same with under my eye. These fine, tiny little fine lines, that's where it typically uh, creases right away. So if you forget, you can just go in, tap them out, and then go in with your powder. Make sure that you look up because it moves the skin around here just a little bit and like stretches it and opens up those creases just a little bit. If you look straight on into your mirror, like if my camera is my mirror and I look at this and do it, my skin is still just slightly like furrowed, you know what I mean? Increased. So I'm setting that makeup into those creases. Whereas if you do this and you look up when you do it, you are stretching up and opening up that skin just a tiny bit so that that way your powder is going into the crease and stopping your concealer and your foundation from going into the crease. And then I just move on and powder the rest of the face. I don't personally bake a whole lot. There are times where <laughs> I accidentally go a little bit heavy handed with a bronzer or something and then I'll be like Ugh, and I'll try to bake to, <laughs> to re-lighten up, you know, the areas around, but yeah, I don't typically over powder, but at the same time, I really don't like the feeling of my face being sticky and even once my foundation and stuff dries, even though I don't wear a lot, I just... I don't know. I have to powder my face a little bit, but I try not to do too much. Okay, so now is contouring, bronzing, whatever. Um, I will be honest, I don't actually use a contour product most of the time. I just use bronzer. Uh, what's the difference? Honestly, uh, contour, I think, usually is a lot more of a cooler toned color, and bronzer is bronzy so it's a warmer tone bronzers make you look like you're sun-kissed and you know um I like a really cool toned bronzer even and I don't typically use the extra step when I first started learning how to do makeup I would see a lot of people do bronzer and then go over top of it and do contour like just here especially and I did that for a little while, but I kind of thought that it made me look a little too muddy, especially from the side. So I, I stopped doing that. And now I just use one product. I go back and forth between a few, but my ultimate favorite is actually this IBY Beauty uh, highlight and contour palette that I think came in a boxy charm a while ago. My favorite color, you can tell how well used this is. <laughs> this is four years of using this palette and this was my favorite color and it is gone 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 uh so i've moved on to this one which honestly might be a little bit too dark for me but i just love their formulas so much so i just keep using it i need to just get another one of these if it's even still available i don't even know but anyway love this so i haven't always done this i don't always but recently i have been again because i used to and i just got this brush and so i thought i would and i liked it i've been using uh one of these dense brushes that's slightly angled for um my cheeks like i said i don't think that it's necessary but i do really like that it lets me be a little bit more precise with where i want to put it i am just going to dip into this a little i always pop off my ex excess access excess excess i know that it's excess but i almost always accidentally say access excess i hit off my excess powder <laughs> and I always start, I have pretty prominent cheekbones already. I don't really have to, you know, suck in for you to see where they are. If you don't, you can do that. That absolutely works. Cause you can see if I do it, I like it elongates where my cheekbone is. So if you don't have natural cheekbones that are super prominent like that, suck in and follow up to your ear. So yeah, I just like to kind of stay around here. I don't go too much underneath. So I just start 
I usually tap it on a little bit to start and then kind of blend it out as I go. Now you see a lot of people focus on their cheeks, their foreheads, and of course their double chin. And I do all of those, but I also like to bronze my temple right here. And I, maybe it's just because of the way that my hairline is. I feel like my hairline recedes back there a little bit. It's a lot more flattering if instead of, I'll show you, instead of doing it like this, and then doing my forehead, which I just follow my hairline. I don't go all the way around since I have a widow's peak and it comes down in the center. And I don't think I have a very large forehead. So if I go under this at all, I think it looks odd. So I just kind of follow my hairline here all the way around. And I'm just wanna make it look, I view it as, I also draw and paint, so I kind of think of it the same way as if I were shading a drawing. This would be the area that I would be darkening, even if it was a black and white picture, to show the dimension and the fact that, you know, my the sun is coming down and hitting the high points, like your brow and your cheekbone and your nose and your cupid's bow and your chin and even under here, you know, but all of this is receded. The contour, the bronzer is what's rounding and shading all of the shapes of your face. So think of it that way. So like I said, I blend it out up here and then see how like just disconnected that looks, I think, if you don't put it here too. I don't know. So that's why I go all the way around. If you have a different hairline, it might look kind of odd. But for me personally, since I do have like this little recession in mine right here, it comes down and then kind of back and down. I like to do it back there too. And I really think that it just makes it look a lot more cohesive. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. And now recently I started, just recently, I've started to do just a little bit right back here. And I know that a lot of times I always see people um, do this and then like carve it out with powder. And I have done that for years. And I honestly, I still do for this front part. But right now I just think that this looks like I just did what I did with makeup. I don't think that it looks like natural shading. I think that this part right in front of my ear should be shaded too. And I say shaded because I'm thinking of it in terms of a painting or a drawing, but it really helps to think of your face that way when you're doing your makeup, I think, especially if you are an artist and you already know how to think of things that way. But so I just put a little bit right back here and I kind of blend it in to what I do under my jaw. Which I feel like I have a pretty decent jawline, but I also have a pretty decent double chin. So I like to blend it down onto my neck a little. I don't want to make my neck look, you know, bronzy, but I do want to connect everything. We don't want to have any unblended lines or harsh areas. See, and now I think I went a little heavy handed on this side. This side looks a little better. Maybe it's just the lighting. I think that's a little heavy. So what you can do is take your sponge that has leftover product on it and powder and just dab it just a little to try to help blend it out and calm it down some. Now for my nose, I used to contour my nose the way that James Charles and all the awesome beauty gurus do where they do two straight lines down the middle and you can kind of see where they should be. You can see the straight part of my nose. But if you see, it's a little wider here than it is here. So you wouldn't necessarily follow that. What people would do would be to bring your line in a little bit like this because it makes your nose look skinnier or as James Charles likes to say, like he can barely breathe. <laughs> and I love the way that, that looks. I think it looks adorable. But um, again, I don't know if it was just something that I wasn't mastering on myself, but I felt like I was getting really good at makeup in a lot of other areas. And just no matter how much I did that, the way everybody else was doing it, I didn't like the way it looked on me. So I started doing what I've seen a couple of people do is I take a little bit of bronzer and I literally bronze my entire nose not, you know, hardcore, but just a dusting. Because we're gonna go back in at the end and add highlights down the bridge 
And I was before kind of bronzing all of the sides and I was bronzing underneath to make it look raised. And I was doing all of that anyway and just leaving the space for this. But I felt like you could see these harsh lines down my nose, no matter how much I tried to blend it out. So I've just stopped doing that. I just bronze and highlight. The highlighter adds what it needs and it, I like the way it looks a lot better, personally. So that's that for bronzer. I used to always do blush after I did bronzer because I think it just feels more natural to like, you know, put your powder on the bottom of your cheek and then this and blend it out because your blush is what you're using to blend out your bronzer, or your contour. So it feels like that's what you're supposed to do next to blend it out, you know, since it's what you just applied. But, you know, you put highlight up here if you like to, if you prefer to. And I think that when you do your blush after highlight, it blends your highlight out a lot better. I didn't do that for a really long time, but I started doing it somewhat recently and I like it a lot better that way. Actually, I think I'm gonna show you what I mean about carving this out with powder under here. I feel like I'm talking about it, but if you really are somebody that's watching this to learn how to do it and you don't know what I'm talking about and I don't show you and I gloss over that, you're like, what the fuck? So I'm gonna show you really quick, even though I don't think I necessarily need to highlight under here a whole lot right now. If you were to do that, like say you carry this shading down and it started to look dark around here and you wanted to lighten this back up a little bit, what you can do again is dump some of your just translucent setting powder into your lid or whatever take your sponge I really like these ones that have a straight edge and then you just carve out your cheekbones like this now what I used to do is take this all the way back but now I like to kind of tap it and blend it back here so that it blends into that um, bronzer that I put here Now, when you're doing this for the purpose of lightening the area because say you put too much of a dark product there, that is the only time that I bake where you leave powder sit for a long time. This is the only area of my face that I ever bake and this is the only reason that I do it for is if I fudge up what I'm doing elsewhere and <laughs> need to fix it with powder. I usually just let that sit long enough for me to complete the next step or two and then I'll brush it off. Sometimes I don't even leave it on that long because I just get paranoid about looking powdery if I let it sit too long. But, um, so we are gonna do the highlight next. I actually do not own any regular highlighters. As ridiculous as that sounds <laughs> for as long as I've been doing makeup. Well, I have the, um, Alchemy palette by uh, when it was Kat Von D Beauty, the little white triangle that has the holographic colored highlighters. I love that. That's so fun for a lot of creative looks and beauty looks. But um, I don't have a regular highlighter. I I actually I think I might have just gotten one in my boxy charm that I got this month, but I haven't done anything with that yet. I haven't looked at it. But what I've been doing all these years is just using a really shiny eyeshadow that's a light enough color that's, you know, not gonna put off a weird cast on my face. And recently, the one I've been using is from the Siate London palette. It's this really shimmery champagne color here. I love the way that it looks. It works just as good as a highlighter. And honestly, I have so many eyeshadow palettes that have like a sparkly, peachy champagne color that works as a highlighter. Like I have that in so many palettes. So I haven't felt the need to go buy a highlighter. Like economically, it doesn't make a ton of sense when I don't need it. So yeah, but you apply it the same way. Now I am going to go ahead and wipe off this extra powder because I like to spray my face with setting spray before I do highlighter because I feel like it sticks better. The setting spray I've been using lately is by Iconic London. I got this in a boxy charm. It's so pretty. When you let it set, all this shimmery stuff settles at the bottom, so you have to shake it up, but then it gets the, oh. Look how pretty, oh I love it. And I feel like it makes my skin look like that. It's so pretty. So pretty. I also really, really, really liked the NYX. The dewy setting spray that NYX has is very good, but this came in a boxy charm and I've been obsessed with it. So I will probably be repurchasing this when it's done. But I'm just going to give myself a spritz here. This stuff smells so good. Oh, I probably should have taken my glasses off my head before I did that. Oh well. 
I like to take my sponge and sort of tap that in, especially if I'm being impatient and I don't want to wait for it to air dry. And we're just going to take this little fluffy brush. Oh, I forgot to tell you, this brush and this brush that I used earlier for my bronzer were both in one of those big uh, like makeup brush holiday gift sets from Walmart. And my boyfriend got it for me and he was like, I know it's from Walmart and that they might suck. I don't know. They might not be good brushes, but I just saw them and thought that they were like your aesthetic and would look really pretty on your vanity. So I got them for you, which like, how sweet is he for thinking like that? But also they're surprisingly really good brushes. I'm not going to lie. I expected them to be pretty crappy because of what they were, but they're really good. I like them. But yeah, so I'm just going to take it right on the top of my cheek. See, you can already see on this side, I have no highlighter on. Do you see where the light is hitting me naturally right here at the top of my cheekbone? That's where you're highlighting. That's the idea is that naturally I'm just sitting across from an open window right now and that is where the light is hitting my face. Same, you see up on my temple right here, the tip of my nose, my chin. Do you see how there's like a shadow on the rounded part of my chin, but then it's brighter here. So with your highlighter, you're just emphasizing all of those spots that are naturally already highlighted where the sun hits you. That's all you're doing. It's so I definitely focus more highlight on my cheeks and my nose, but I do put a little bit on my chin and I like to put a little bit above my temples. Oh, the tip of the nose gets me. And then I usually use my finger to just kind of go over the edges and really softly blend it out. So oh, yeah, I do highlight uh, my Cupid's bow, but I actually wanted to show you guys a little, I don't know if it's like a hack. <laughs> I like to contour my Cupid's bow. So I have a, well, your Filtrum. I have a Filtrum piercing, a Medusa. I just love super deep, prominent Cupid's bows on people when this little indentation is like very juicy on people that I don't know why that's just a feature that I personally have always found so attractive I think it's very beautiful so I like to kind of cheat and enhance mine and I don't always do this but for the purposes of like I'm showing you guys a face routine video so I want to kind of show you all of my little tips and tricks that I like to do from time to time so I typically use an angled brush for this this is the one I use for my eyebrows it has a spoolie on the other end and you're just going to dip into your contour or the bronzer, whatever you're using, and tap it on. And I like to, you can see it on me at least. I know on some people it's more um, up and down to parallel lines. Mine is more triangular. I don't know if you can see the natural high points of mine. So I just, I just try to uh, enhance the depth of it. And I do mine like a triangle shape tap off the extra because you do not want too much. You don't want to look like I have a Hitler stash. I know this looks ridiculous. I'm not going to leave it as dark, I promise. Okay, well, there's that. I know that looks awful right now. And then I'm going to take my sponge and blend it out and tap it in. I use my finger too. Do you see now? Look at that. It just looks like a natural shadow. It just looks like I have a deeper Cupid's bow. I love it. I'm obsessed with this trick. And then when you take that same angled brush and you dip into your highlighter and you're gonna put straight lines just down the out, you're outlining what you just highlighted or what you just contoured essentially, the high points of this Cupid bow, the peaks of your skin there is what you are highlighting. And then what everybody does, which I usually do this after lipstick, but I'll do it now too, just to show you the top of your cupid's bow. And then I use my finger and blend out the sides. I mean, I'm sorry. Look at that. I, I love it. I love it so much. That's my favorite trick. <laughs> it's not like the most fun part to do of my face, but that's my favorite little like, I feel like I'm kind of good at makeup because I figured that out. <laughs> it's so stupid. Hey guys, editing cat here. I just realized that I forgot to go back and do my blush after I did my highlighter when I filmed this video yesterday. 
and that makes me really sad because I really like blush. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and pop in some pictures of what it normally looks like when I wear it because, you know, I feel like that was the whole point of this <laughs> video and I really, really love blush and I didn't mean to not put it on so I just wanted to include what that looks like. And also I wanna let you guys know that my two, well three really favorite bl blushes that I've been using recently are I don't remember the shade, so I'll put it on the screen, but it's a Baked Blush by Milani. And then there's two by NARS, it's Orgasm and Orgasm X. I love, they're all so good. I really like peachy blushes. The Orgasm ones have a lot more pink to them though. And I've been getting more into that lately, so yeah. Anyways, I just wanted to add that and acknowledge it. I'm sorry, I forgot blush, I failed. <laughs> but that's it. That's how I finish off my face. That's everything for my face. Uh, Usually I do lashes and lipstick last. Oh, 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 I didn't finish my eyes. I haven't done that yet, but that is what I would typically do now. I've finished my whole face routine. So now I go back in and I finish my under eye. I do lipstick and then that's when I would usually put on lashes, but that's already done now. So I'm gonna go do all that and I'll be right back. All right guys, that is everything I have for you today. This is today's look all complete. I had so much fun filming this today, honestly. Like, I've been wanting to make these kinds of videos for a while. I just, the basics, it's fun to talk about. And I know that tutorials aren't like the cool thing to do on YouTube anymore and that I'm not trying to become a YouTuber. I just, I really like making this kind of content and I hope that it helps somebody out there, that somebody at least kind of enjoys watching it, so. Anyways, please make sure you comment down below and let me know what you wanna see next. Let me know what step you want to see next i'll probably do eyebrows next if nobody suggests or asks for anything different but yeah that's all i've got for today so my little ghosty friends and i are gonna boop on out of here <laughs> have a good day guys bye